Hi everyone, it's Four Corners and welcome to a video that started out so simple. Just a man wanting to talk about how he enjoys watching Kai's Gold Dragon Raider in the show. But as I was writing my notes to why I particularly like seeing Kai's vehicle in action in the original video, it led to something a lot deeper than just a cool car. It led to the idea of Kai's Gold Dragon Raider vehicle being the first vehicle to achieve true potential. So beside the terrible pricing for this set, in my opinion, they introduced a very well executed unique design here. The idea of long arms with wheels and hub like chassis in the back does sound weird, but I think the size of this vehicle turns the weird into more of an intimidation factor. And the thing is, if you look at Ninjago vehicles in the sets and show from the past, the first ones that come to mind are the unique ones for better or worse. The Land Bounty, Ultra Sonic Raider, Misfortune's Keep, Ninja Copter, Ronin Rex, all vehicles that don't relate much to what we see in the real world. And at this point, I thought I'd solved why Kai's Gold Dragon Raider is extremely fun to watch. It's similarly an instant icon alongside its unique predecessor. But no, there was some missing factor that gave this the extra edge over all of Ninjago's old previous iconic unique vehicles. That's when an idea popped into my head and it all had to do with movement. Before we get into that, I need to go over a rule. Being we're only going to look at land based vehicles. See we have to remove any flying or swimming vehicles from this idea because all the vehicles in the underwater and sky categories no matter what shape or size all relatively move the same since there's no environment for it to bounce or react off of. Sure Zane's jet might be more agile than his helicopter but it's all the same as both of them don't interact with the environment. This rule eliminating all the other categories of vehicles is a critical point in the Gold Dragon Raider's success. So once I only started to focus on unique land based Ninjago vehicles, I found issues with all of them in Ninjago's old era, when Will filmed the old animation company was in charge. I found they might look fun and innovative but didn't move in the fun and innovative way they looked, apart from a few exceptions. Take the Super Stealth Raider for example, the model would just magically turn with no indication of how. I don't blame the animators because it's no easy feat to make an oversized vehicle work in a city environment, but it doesn't change the fact that it didn't act the unique way it looked. Think about Transformers, you're not there to specifically see car chases or mech fights individually, you're there for that unique experience that is the mixing of both. Well, film in general was a little rough around the edges when it came to movement. They were able to cover their weak areas up with flying jets and bikes and cars since there's not much to restrict you there, but since they were already hit or miss with basic car animation, they definitely couldn't give us a mix of that and the unique way some Ninjago vehicles should be moving. Unfortunately, if we ever wanted to see an innovative, larger than life sized vehicle live up to its true potential, we need like this crazy creative animation company that could find solutions to any problem and was also a master of movement. Oh wait, we did! DHX or Wild Brain Studios soon took over after season 11. They finally made a show about fighting, have really good fights through so many innovative animation techniques. Their mech fights were a big improvement, general vehicle animation was great, and keep in mind none of this is luck. To make it all work you won't believe how many clever solutions they come up with. But one thing was yet to be seen, could they make the larger than life unique land based vehicle work? Many of you might say, oh the land bounty is their first example right? And while that is half true, I think the Land Bounty's design meant for it to just act like a really big car with an extra set of wheels. So while it was still impressive the newer animation company made the Land Bounty move naturally in every environment it crossed, we were yet to see the full potential of this. When would Wild Brain Studios be put to the ultimate test and give us a vehicle that looked like nothing we'd seen before and also moved like nothing we'd seen before? That is when Kai's Gold Dragon Raider came in. Not only was it big, its front wheels were extended all the way, not to mention the first time it's seen, it takes place in a city environment and part of one of the most ambitious Ninjago action sequences we've ever seen. So straight off the bat, lots of concerns and hopes. Steering, suspension, tight turns are all not helping making this easy. However, if done right, all this could give us the spectacle of seeing something look and move like nothing we've seen before. Remember, prior to this, we've seen things that look unique but basically move like your average car or worse. Lo and behold, Kai's Gold Dragon Raider gave us that spectacle. Wild Brain Studios made a lot of smart decisions to get there, but they achieved it. As a result, I want to see more of this thing. Seeing it turn and bounce lightly thanks to its suspension was also natural and fun to see. So the reason why Kai's Gold Dragon Raider really lights up a scene is because it is unique and hence iconic, but also is one of the first to move its iconic unique way. 
Thank you for watching a video talking about Kai's Gold Dragon Raider. I appreciate you watching till the end, and as usual, I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye